Welcome to Next to Madison, a podcast to help you live your best life. Welcome back. Another episode of Next to Madison. This is episode 156. We are switching gears a little bit and we are talking about relationships and self-love. All of it goes together. My goal on this podcast, okay, is to make you happy, healthy, and wealthy. And so we are going to be kind of, you know, switching around. We did a lot on the crypto and the Web3, and now we're going to kind of go to relationships. We're going to go back to crypto because it's all part of that happy, healthy, and wealthy. So remember, when you want to get happy, come to Next to Madison. When you want to get healthy, come to Next to Madison. And when you want to get wealthy, well, you guessed it. Come to Next to Madison. We have countless guests that are dropping information that is is going to help you with your life. And hopefully we can make you kind of laugh along the way. So I know that some of the episodes aren't as funny because they're more serious. I try to get the jokes in there, but we do the best we can. Uh, on another note, happy Cinco de Mayo. I cannot believe it. Um, everybody, please drink responsibly. Watch that tequila. It reminds me of my favorite country song, though. Tequila makes her clothes fall off. And it does. We do tend to make weird, odd decisions when we're having tequila, but uh, tequila is is fun. So just be responsible. And this is kind of very fitting for this uh, podcast. If you're single, you want to listen. If you're in a relationship, you want to listen. If you have two legs, you want to listen. If you have no legs, you want to listen. You just want to listen to this podcast. We are talking relationship advice and self love. Okay. These are very important. So if you're one of my crypto people that has kind of come on to the audience due to my, due to the crypto interviews, don't tune out. Okay. Don't, don't do it because self-love leads to confidence. Confidence leads to making better decisions, having better relationships to meet the right people to find out that next crypto. So it's all intertwined. So make sure you're listening. Uh, one of the questions I'm going to ask, so you're going to hear it again, because I always ask my friends this, I say that are in a relationship or dating or just met somebody. I always say, when did you sleep together? Cause I think that's a very important question and it, and it's not a one size fits all. No pun intended. If you know what I mean, back to that tequila. Uh, it, it's always different. So I'm going to see what her take is on that because I think that's a dicey area, right? And I think for women, um, as much as we want to be in this feminist movement, we were not intended to have multiple partners and sleep around uh, because the male is going into, I can't believe I'm talking about this, into us, so to say, we take on kind of the DNA. So you don't want to sleep with somebody just to sleep with somebody because you could take on their bad juju and their bad energy. And then you're carrying that with you where men don't have as much of that impact. So, um, I did see that on one of my favorite crypto girls, uh, tw tweets recently. And I thought, Oh my gosh, that's so true because we want to have power and we want to have this, but I don't think that just sleeping around, if you want to sleep around, you go for it. Right. But I don't think that's how we're intended to be. I know when I make bad decisions, AKA tequila, um, I tend to feel worse about myself in the morning. I did just burp, so ignore me. Um, so yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna get the information. Um, I feel like all my life is like really kind of coming together, except for romantic relationships. Um, we're also gonna talk about like fear relationships, which I have a little bit of. So uh, you guys are gonna hear kind of more of a raw and authentic uh, side of me. So, anyways, I'm gonna stop yapping my trap. We will be right back with our guest on episode 156 of Next to Madison. Enjoy this message from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Balance 7. Balance 7 is a concentrated alkaline with a pH of 11 plus. I didn't realize that acidosis is responsible for almost every infectious disease in our world today. With COVID-19 and the world opening back up, I started taking Balance 7 and after three days of taking it, I feel better, I have more energy, my focus is better, I think clearer. This supplement is amazing. Thanks, Dr. Norastani, for the recommendation. And all Next to Madison listeners are able to try it today by visiting balance7.com and enter code word MADISON for a complimentary gift and free shipping. We are back with our amazing guest, Hope McGrath. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you here. We have been on this like crypto craze. I love cryptocurrency and it's kind of like 
my thing and I want everybody to be educated to be able to make money. But one of the things that I think is important in order to make money in the markets, whether it's crypto or the stock market or any other business you're in, is that you got to have your, your life together. You got to have that self love. You've got to have good positive relationships, whether they're romantic or business around you have the confidence to network, to make all the pieces of life work. And so I'm, I'm excited for this to come on. Um, money and, and relationships tend to do very well on this podcast. So I know that people are like, ah, finally relationship talk. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So before we get into the relationship stuff, you are a transformational coach. Yes. Um, how did you get into it? And what does that exactly mean? Well, um, how I got into it is just kind of being at a moment in life where I was doing some soul searching. I, I spent years in the fashion industry and I was producing fashion shows and special events in New York City. And I was started to have a baby and was a stay at home mom. And after that, I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to do um, PR as much as I was doing for designers before. And I was like, what do I really want to do? So while I was doing my soul searching, I came across the um, profession of coaching and I realized, oh, I have a psych degree. I love psychology. This is like, I love spirituality. It like blends everything of like the essence of who I am anyway. I kind of like, I've always been like this since I was like 13 years old, supporting my friends with their passions and their love lives and their drama. I'm like always that go-to person. I was like, oh, this is like naturally something I love to do. So I, you know, dove in, um, got certified um, and started my coaching business. And it's been a wild ride. Yes. Well, I, I think it's great. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing how like, if you looked back 20 to 40 years ago, like the whole coach thing was only really affiliated with sports. But yeah. now people have realized, I think people aren't as afraid to ask for help and, and going to a therapist or a coach is more normal. And the most successful people in the world have coaches. So I think, yes, I, I agree. I, I thought I've learned that it's probably mandatory at this point, not mandatory, but it, it will support your um, evolution if you do have support in any way. Oh, in any way. A hundred percent. Absolutely. And it, it is so true. It's like, you know, that's why they always say you're, you're, you kind of become the sum of five, the five people you hang out with the most, you know, like what are the conversations that are kind of around you? And I think a coach is like checking in with that person, however often you can afford it, whether, you know, ho hopefully for most you get to a point where it's once a week, but you really can kind of check in to make sure you're on that, that right path and get that extra ass kicking motivation that you need to get to that level. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, as a coach, um, what I do is I help predominantly women, um, some special men when they're really down and open hearted, which is rare sometimes, but I really help women kind of who are feeling lonely and maybe lacking that little confidence to really elevate their confidence, to open their heart to love, to really think about how I can actualize and visualize my dreams and actually take action to accomplish them. So it's very action oriented, but also mindset shifting. Yeah. So I'm helping women, whether they want to open their hearts and find love or whether they want to transition to a new career. Those are the women that I support. Well, that, that is great. Men do not turn out, tune out. This is, this is for you too. <laughs> it is for you too, because you know what? There are so many men that need to tap into the feminine. And it is very important for these men to really understand that when they can tap into that side of themselves, their whole life can change, deepen relationships, you know, elevate their careers. I've worked with men that, that have that within them and they've been able to excel in their careers, lose tons of weight when they want to lose weight or like, you know, heal from a, like maybe divorce and then find a new love that, or get a raise and how to, how to talk to your boss to like get that raise you want, you know, or start, start your own business. Or as I said, there's so many men that need this too. Even though I am speaking to women in terms of the most of the clients that I work with, this stuff is universal. It it's is. just that it's just that our men open or not. That's the question. I mean, this is all universal. 
it, it, it is, it is so, so true. So let's talk about that. How, what are, like if somebody, when somebody comes to you or let's make it just kind of, so people can kind of write down different things um, or take note or come back and listen. But you talked about the confidence and I think confidence is the most important ingredient when it comes to everything you do in your life. And you say you help women and or men become more confident. How do you do that? Like a quick snapshot of kind of how. Well, I think first of all, you have to realize when you need support. So I can't help anyone who doesn't even want help, right? Yeah. You actually have to have self-awareness. Yeah. So the, so, so the self-awareness is, am I living with like my authentic joy? Am I like living, am I like living in good spirits? You know, do I want to change something? Am I holding myself back? Am I self-sabotaging? That is a big one, right? So yeah. once you have that awareness, how I support you to elevate your confidence is teaching and supporting and guiding you into self-care, self-love, because when you start taking care of yourself and when you start loving yourself more through all kinds of rituals that I share and mindfulness practices that I teach and just that support, once you start giving yourself that time to look within, whether it's meditation, you're kickstarting your health and wellness routine, you're doing all kinds of different things, journaling and all these things to support yourself, that is when your innate confidence can blossom. But and if you're like running around doing 500,000 things and not taking care of yourself because you take care of everyone else, and most women do that, mm -hmm. and actually men do that too, but in a totally different way. Yeah. When you don't pause and give yourself that time, then you might not be um, feeling... <clears throat> at your most confident. And it, 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 it's true. You know, it's like when you feel like, you know, if I haven't gone to the gym for three days or I've been overeating or hungover or something, it's like you just feel shitty. Yeah. And when you're feeling shitty, then um, you're not at your best. Yeah. That's just, oh. You're just not at your best. And when you're not at your best, then you're like, people get the vibe, you get the vibe. And yeah. then it's hard to like snap out of it. So that's why sometimes it's good to have support, whether it's friends, family, accountability partners at work, coaches, therapists, um, healers, whatever it is you want to do, it's important to reach out. Oh, exactly. So the first right. step really is, you know, acknowledging where you need help. And, and I'm telling you guys, I don't care how successful you are or whatnot, like everybody needs help in some aspect of their life. So don't shy away from that. Maybe take like a life inventory or audit. Mm -hmm. Use more help. But I promised everybody we would talk about relationships. So I guess yes. let's jump into that because people okay. really like relationship stuff. It's so, so, it's very powerful, isn't it? It is. And it's funny because I feel in my life that I am confident in the majority of the areas, right? But for some reason, romantic relationships, I'm not. And it's funny when I go out with my friends, they're like, oh, that guy's looking at you. And I'm like, no, he's not. What are you talking about? I'm like, I have zero game, zero. Like, And you're gorgeous, so what's up? I, I don't. What's up? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I, we can invite the whole podcast into my therapy session. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, but you know what? You're not alone. Yeah. Do you know how many people feel the same way as you? Well, I think you also kind of carry on certain things, like maybe certain heartbreaks or, or patterns that, that tend to show up. And, and for me, it's like, okay, why do I keep meeting like deadbeat people? Or like, it just doesn't go anywhere. Or you hook up with them or make out with them and then it just dies off. It's like, is it me? Like, I'm starting to think it's me. <laughs> you know what? I mean- you know what, when you're saying it's consistent, if you're seeing a pattern, yeah. then you have to look in the mirror. Then girl, you have to look in the mirror and you can't blame yourself. Right. It's not your fault these guys are walking away. It's not your fault they're not like leveling up for you, but there's an energetic shift that needs to happen. This is the issue. This happens all the time with women that I work with and my friends who are still single that desire to find a life partner. There's some women that want to live the single life and they're good to go. I'm talking about women that are single that would like to um, 
live with true love. Um, some of those women, the reason why what's happening to you is happening is like in my, this might sound like really, you know, you know, I guess what they call a hippie or whatever, but it's your aura. Like you're not radiating open heartedness. Oh no, I'm closed off like a freaking. So, mountain. so, okay. Now if you're closed off, that's why the guys are not stepping up. But it's like, I'm going after the wrong guys. Cause it's like, this, this doesn't matter because I'm so focused on everything else that I'm doing. Right. And so when you think that it's not happening. True. So, so I think that's kind of what it is. And my intuition, we're not going to make this a therapy session or a coaching session, but my intuition is when that happens, this is very important for everyone to hear this is within subconscious is a low self-worth. And that's what we have to really think about that because that happens to, I, I feel that in many different other areas of my life, we all have this like insecurity, like, am I worth it? Um, this is a, that's a false feminine belief, by the way, it's a universal false feminine belief. So it's not just you. It's like a universal thing that a lot of women wonder, are we worth it? Are we good enough? These are like major things that this is just universal. It's not just you. So while times when women are having issues with men, they're dating the wrong guys over and over and over again. It, you got to look at um, the origins of how you're feeling about yourself. And then we can transform your mindset. It's not like a big dramatic, you know, years and years of therapy. It's a hundred percent not. It's a subtle mindset shift. And then your heart can be open. And when you walk around as gorgeous as you are, the guys will start radiating and they'll be like, oh my God, I'm really into her. Can I take you to dinner? Not BS other stuff, you know? Yeah. Can I like risk? And a lot of that has to do with respect. See, I talked to a lot of my girlfriends about this too, like self respect. So I've been with my husband for 25 years, which is crazy. Wow. Um, so we met um, when I was young, 25. So yeah, just turned 50. So you look we great. Have, we, we, you look thank you. Sure. Thank you so much. So we have a teenage daughter and, um, but it took me a long time, even as a young age in my twenties, I was dating a lot of like, I would say the wrong guys and falling in love with the wrong guys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, I'm not putting up with this shit anymore. I'm just not. Yeah. And so there's a pause when you realize, wait, what am I worth? What do I accept? What am I going to put up with? And there has to be a um, very clear boundary setting, which is a lot of, a lot of women and men don't um, embrace boundaries. Mm -hmm. so we have a hard time setting boundaries so um yeah, I, I could see that because people are like okay are my bound they it's the self-worth thing that comes back where it's like okay these are my boundaries but like well it, it, am i gonna made to be sound like crazy am i too high maintenance am i so you start questioning the boundaries that you're trying to set right but when you set boundaries the right guy is going to be like oh i'm down with this because she respects herself Ex right. I, and you have, and I tell myself this and everybody, you have to tell yourself if they're not okay with it, then they're just not the right person. And you they're just, just have a lot of time. Keep it stepping. Keep so stepping. Here's the, here's the next juicy question. When do you spread your legs and take it? And no, I'm just kidding. When do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> when did you sleep with them? I mean, you know, as adults, I leave that up to you. Um, I don't think the one night stand is like the way to go um, in oh. order to um, embody your true life partner. It doesn't mean you can't have a one night stand and then marry that person and live together in love for the rest of your life because that does happen. You know, yeah. what I mean? it does happen. But what I'm saying is it might be in your best interest to pause. And I know there's like this, this spiritual way of looking at intimacy and sex as like... Um, it's an exchange, a spiritual exchange. Like our bodies are precious and we don't need to just give our bodies to everything because when we are sleeping with people, I didn't even know this. My healer told me this, that like the ancestors and energetic levels from like your family and then your partner's family, even if you just met this guy or this, or this woman, 
when you have um, intimate relationships with them and you're exchanging your body, the energy from your both lives go intertwined to one another. So if this person has some negative stuff in his life, that's now in, in, that energy is like seeped into you, but you didn't know that. You know what I mean? Like everyone never want to sleep with anyone again. Um, well, it just makes you just clamped up like a mousetrap too. I'm like, well, you know what? That might make you pause. Well, that's the thing too. And it's like, right. It, it, like, I don't, I, I mean, let, let's make this clear. I'm not a slut. I'm a Christian. Uh, <laughs> I've had some slutty nights with tequila. Hopefully it's not tonight because this thing goes a mile, but you know. Uh-huh. But no, that is true because actually I was, I was meeting with this, this I, spiritual psychic woman. She uh, meets with my friend all the time. My friend loves her. And she was helping me out with um, some, some things I had with, with a job. And I just was torn. Like, like, do I just leave that job and just focus on certain things? Like, you know, and she was great. And so we were talking and I I was talking to her last week and, and she said, um, you know, it's very important. I tell my female clients, like women are not meant to sleep around because when you sleep with somebody, like as a woman, because they're depositing into you, it sounds so gross. You're taking on their DNA where they're not really taking, because you're not depositing into them. So they're more easily able to sleep around. So this whole feminist movement totally screwed us up the feminist movement should have been purely about your your can do as much as the man you can make as much money you can be better you can do whatever right like you're you're equal in that way but like does it mean we 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 can go around and and just and i think it was like oh i can sleep with whoever i can do whatever you can do that but you have to but you have to realize it's not for everybody and and i don't think we're made up to do that because i know yeah. when I sleep with somebody i don't feel good i feel like shit like i hate myself when i do it i hate to hate myself which is why i don't do it like yeah, that's, a, that's a strong in, like, word it is like unless i'm in a very like okay i trust this person like there's potential here i'm like no this isn't what you know for me like jesus would want for me and i try to take it back when i'm not on tequila but yeah <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I, I get it. And basically what your healer said was the same thing that my healer said, which is why I just shared that. I did, by the way, what I just shared about that energetic um, shifting between intimacy, I had no, I just literally heard about that like this year. Like I didn't even know that existed. You know what I mean? So I'm learning it too. And I'm sharing what I heard, but your healer said the same thing. So there has to be truth to that. But at the same time, so many women feel empty one of my closest friends just told me she decided to not be dealing with this guy having having um having like you know little rendezvous with him because she would feel the she said empty i feel empty when he leaves because she knows there's no future right now with this person and that emptiness is real it is and so then why do that to yourself. And as women, we do tend to be more emotional than men. It's just like in our nat- nurturing makeup. So then why do that to yourself? So she decided she was no longer engaging with him. Right. And she's going to, you know, work on opening her heart to love in a different form. I'm like, because, you know, why bother? If you're feeling empty when he walks out the door, then you know something's off. And that's about that's about what I talk about all the time with my clients is listening to your intuition. Yeah. Listening to your intuition. If you're feeling empty, if you're hating yourself after sleeping with a guy, when you have a feeling it might not go anywhere, then that might mean let's rethink my actions. What can I do different next time? Yeah. But also forgive yourself. You got to forgive yourself. You can't be holding ourselves into grudges and whatever BS. Yeah. Forgive yourself and keep it moving. Right, exactly. So it, it, I just laugh because I'm like, oh gosh, there's a whole. I know comedians have done bits, but I'm like, there's a whole other comedy bit there where it's like this feminist movement. Like Ali Wong had a funny joke where she was like, "Why did you guys do this? I used to be, we used to be able to just sit on the couch and and get everything paid for and do nothing. That was our job. We did nothing. We took care of some bills. <laughs> that was it. And now we got to work. What the? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, oh, it's so true. But it's true. And then it's like, oh, now we now we can act like guys and just fuck whoever we want. And it's like, no, okay. There's a genetic thing going on here. 
that doesn't quite work that way. You're never, we're not apples to oranges. It's, it's, it's apples and oranges. It's not oranges to oranges. It's, it's, it's different. So yeah, I think, because I have a lot of friends. I mean, most of my friends are married and in and, and great relationships, but the ones that aren't, it, it is kind of these same patterns. Yeah, and, and when there's a pattern, it's okay. What'd you say? It's like, they're like, I don't need it. And I say that too, all the time. I'm like, fuck it, I don't need it. And then I go to look for apartments back in New York. And I say to myself, when I see the price tag, I say, ah, now this is the time I'd like to be in a relationship. Exactly. <laughs> you guys can split the bill, right? Exactly. Yeah. I totally get that. I think like, it's valid. Like you don't need it. You can live a happy, beautiful, fabulous life without a partner. Oh, and I'm doing great. That's the problem. I'm getting too stuck in my ways. See, and that's a thing. Sometimes when women become successful and they feel like they don't need a man, or what happens is when you become successful, you intimidate men, which is a whole other story, right? Yeah, and yeah. I've heard that too. Like people will be like, oh, you're you're intimidating because you're, you know, like no more about crypto than most of the men. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. But it's, but I don't, I don't want to be with a man who's intimidating. I don't want to be with a little bitch. You, you oh, should never, I, yeah. You should never um, feel that you are changing a part of yourself for your partner. So that's a wise wisdom that you're mentioning, but also like a lot of men do feel intimidated um, when it comes to whether it's finances or, not, maybe not just finances, but it's also about women who I find are independent for too long. Like, well, this one, I'm going to say flip that. Not too long. There's no such thing as too long, right? <laughs> um, my mother's been single for 30 years. I'm like, whatever, you know? Um, but women who have decided to remain independent and like live in their best life, a lot of times when men come into the life, they feel that they're not needed. Because men like to feel needed and they, they like to feel useful. Like you need them to do stuff. Like I remember I was um, with a friend and I was driving and my car broke down after I dropped my daughter off one day. Now, it didn't really break down. It was a tire issue. That's what it was. And she was like, okay, let's just go to the tire place. And I was like, I can't really do that because I, I know that my husband wants to like take care of the car like that he it's like a man like a guy thing like he wants to be responsible for the car i'm yeah. not just gonna take him take the car to any old tire shop that you're mentioning to me right right and she was and so i did that and then like a maybe a week or two later she was like you know i just realized when you did that it was you were showing to me that you need to let your husband like do what he's best at doing like if that's his thing let a man be a man like if he wants to take care of the car let him take care of the car. She goes, I would just be like, let me just do it myself. But if you do it yourself and you don't consult with your partner, what if he knew the best place to get your car done? What if that was like his thing that he actually likes to be responsible for? It's like thinking about your partner and not just doing stuff. But when you're an independent woman and you don't have to rely on any man for anything, you run your show, you don't have to have conversations and debates and all the other things then you're so used to doing things by yourself. Some women forget they need to pause and like ask what someone else thinks or think about that other person. Yeah. And that, that's where the disconnect can come for a lot of women that are very, very independent. Well, it's true. And then there's this other thing where people don't want to, don't want to be needy. So like mm -hmm. too much. So it's a very fine balance. I think, I think the moral of this story is if it's drama filled and you feel like it's more work, then it's probably not the right person. You should just cut bait and run. Um, yeah. Well, I think here's the thing. Drama in your relationship. Absolutely. No intuition is step out. Right. But drama in a situation that is outside of your, your, your couple relationship, if he's worth it or she's worth it, then it's worth working out the outside sources. For example, for my example, I'm mixed, I'm biracial, I'm married, my, my husband's white, I'm black, I'm mixed. So when there's issues in, so let's say with a family, with race, right? You're not gonna 
you're not going to let outside sources tell you who you and who you can't marry or what you're going to do. If that was the case, I wouldn't even be here because my mother married an African in the 60s. You know, my mom's a white hippie. So that would never, ever, ever happen. You know, so what I'm saying is that when there's an intimate relationship, it's about you two. And if you guys are going to work it out and there's drama outside, then you guys can work it out. But if there's drama inside your relationship, it's time to open your eyes and wake up and don't deal with the BS. Yeah, no, it, 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 that's, that's absolutely true. Um, no, that, I mean, that, it's true. And it's like, that's where the com- I think the confidence comes in in order. And they always say like, in order to have love, a loving relationship, you have to love yourself. Absolutely. So if and I want the listeners today to be able to take away two things from this segment, what are some steps that they can do, whether they're at the gym, on a walk, driving in their car right now, that will contribute to more self-love for them? Um, I think going for a walk maybe, or when you're just out and about, I think it's about having positive Mm self-talk. So if you have something in your brain that if you're talking negative to yourself, you can literally pause it and say something powerful. So I'm gonna give you an example. Last, yesterday I was with a client and the client says, I feel trapped. Okay, how do you wanna feel? She says, I wanna feel powerful, I wanna feel free. All right, there's your mantra right there. I am powerful, I am free. You say that over and over and over again. You don't need to say I'm trapped. You just have the positive statement in your brain and you repeat it to yourself over and over and over again. You you know what you guys can do? You guys can come up with, this is something else like you you can do that. Pick out, create an I am statement. I am something, whatever you wanna feel, feel that make you feel good, whatever's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. I am powerful. Let's just use that one for now. Or I am more than enough. That's one of my favorites. I am more than enough. Yeah. And and then you, you have your statement, right? You say it every day when you wake up, you say it when you're walking, you say when you're driving, whatever, but you can put that statement in your phone and put it in three times, three different times of the day. And I'll make an alert. So it literally pops up on your phone, morning, afternoon, and evening. A little statement that says, I am powerful. You're like, oh, wait, I'm talking to myself. I'm feeling good today. That's powerful. This is fun. You know? That. So you can do a little calendar thing and just have- Yeah, put it in a calendar and put it in an alert. And another, another thing to do if you don't want to use like a mantra for yourself, you can pick five words that represent ha- your aspirations for the year. So for example, confidence, successful, you know, um, perseverance, you know, whatever words you want to use, wealthy, whatever. You put five words that inspire you and how you want to live out your life this year. And you put those in your phone and those five powerful words pop up three times a day. I've been doing this for two years and this is not my idea. I think this is um, Brendan Burchard. He's a famous like productivity guru. This was his idea and I was using it and I love it. I'm like, oh, this is great. I love that. Yeah. That's it's something really to do. But and also, I also really am powerful to understand that though you might be listening to this on as a podcast when you're out and about, it's very important for you to give yourself solo time to sit, like sit still and meditate for five minutes. Like, because you can't really deepen your self-love on the go. You actually have to sit down. So I am, you were talking to somebody who struggles with meditation. I don't, I don't like it. I don't crave it. I will do other things. Like I burn Palo Santo and circle my body with it sometimes. Like, especially if I have a pitch meeting coming up and I'm like, get the energy out of here, you know, thinking about what I want and the mantras and the vision boards. When it comes to meditation, I'm just like, huh? I feel like I know. You can't, you're not alone. I can't shut it off. But I, but I need to. Yeah, I think you are not alone. There are millions of people that feel that way. They feel like, I don't like meditating or I don't know how to meditate because every time I close my eyes, thoughts pop into my head. So I'm doing it wrong. 
right? And that's actually not true because you can't do meditation wrong. No such thing. Okay. All you're doing is you're sitting down, giving yourself five minutes. You can put a timer on your phone, five minutes, and you're just following your breath. That's it. Breathing in and breathing out. And if a thought pops in your mind, oh my God, I have to do this. Someone said this. I'm pissed off about this. Whatever, whatever, pop, the thought pops into your mind. You see the thought, you release the thought, and you go back to your breathing. It's much easier said than done. But if you can just try this for five minutes a day, and that is sitting meditation, that's not laying down and going to sleep. It's <laughs> sitting right. down. Yeah. It's sitting down, it's putting five minutes on your phone and focusing on your breath. Or there's a, there's a thousand apps out there to do guided meditations if you don't feel like you feel comfortable meditating on your own. Yeah. Um, so I just want to say that it's totally natural because um, to kind of do anything but to totally avoid meditation because it's hard and it's yeah. annoying. I get it. But it's so transformative. And I think, um, I mean, science proves it, you know, gazillions of years of Buddhist oh, monks yeah. proves it. There's it's, it's, you can actually live with a slightly happier, more joyous existence. If you have a meditation practice and if you don't want to meditate, maybe prayer mm -hmm. practice, someone's religious, but they don't want to meditate. That's fine. As long as you have some spiritual practice at all, whether you're praying or meditating or whatever. Um, if you do that, it will allow you to um, have more joy in the present moment, period, point blank. Yeah, and it feels like you would be just more relaxed and be able to kind of process. You wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't be as reactive to situations. Uh, absolutely. I was just talking to a client yesterday and she was saying how she doesn't want to be like uh, negative all the time, like always seeing the worst instead of the best. Um, always thinking the glass is half empty more than the glass is half full. And one of my remedies for that is meditation. So like once you start, because it can prevent yourself from saying things you might not want to say, because you're more used to slowing down. It's not, it's not a miracle jug. It's not like a magic pill, but what it can do is support you in slowing down. And once you're slowing down, if you really want to tell someone off, you might pause for a second, you know, yes. <laughs> you might, you might do a little pause. It might improve, it might improve your relationships. You know, I mean, it's, it's definitely helped me with my relationships, which is why I do it. It's helped yeah. transform my relationships, okay. you know, and I got to do that. I got to set that timer. And do you recommend best time to do this morning? I would say morning or evening before bed, but I think morning, I do think morning is the best where you're just gonna even set it for five minutes before you um, go out about your day. Um, but if you can't get it done in the five minutes, I've had clients that have just put the five minutes on their phone at work during lunch, or when they get to the office right before the day starts, they, they do their five minutes, or maybe right before bed, they'll do their five minutes um, to just, there's no divine right time. You have to follow your own intuition and what works for you. But morning is always good because it like kickstarts your day. Yes, that's true. I know they always say to work out in the morning too, but I'm like, so I, I can't work out in the morning because I feel like I get cramps because I'm dehydrated. But yeah, everyone has their, everyone has their time, you know? Yeah, no, it, it, that's exactly right. But no, I, li I like these tips and, and I think this is good. And, I, and I'm glad that people, you know, I hope you guys are getting like something out of this and tips. I know I'm going to do the phone thing for sure. And then I'm going to try to meditate. And just try, you know, what? No, no, no. here's I'm the thing. You can't try, but here's my thing as a coach, hey. you can't try. I have to hold you accountable. Ah. So when, when are you going to commit? When are you going to commit? The, the word is commit. Yeah. How can you commit to yourself? When are you going to do your meditation tomorrow? What time? Okay. I No, I like that. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna do it when I um when I wake up. Well, it's hard for me when I wake up because as soon as I wake up, the little doggy has to go out. So right after, it's okay. I, I get my dog release herself because I don't want to so wait five. So what time? Before. What time is that? Um, that would be at six a.m. Okay, so you're gonna commit six a.m. You do five minutes of meditation. 
or, or 605. I get up at six and then I'll take her out. Then 605. 605. Sounds good. Yeah. Perfect. Is that doable? Yeah. Can you commit? Yeah. So how many days next week can you commit to doing that? Well, I can start tomorrow. Um, I can get all of them. So you can commit seven days a week. That, I mean, I'm just saying that's a lot. Are you ready to commit to that? The truth is that the time might be a little different. Right. But you can commit to seven days a week, five minutes a day. I'm going to, cause I know you're going to call me and I'm going to be all accountable. So yes. No, no, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to check in and hey, no, no, no. As coaches, we actually don't do that. We don't like harass our clients. Our clients have to check in with us to let us yeah. know how they're doing. So we're not like acting like we're moms. Right. Um, totally. Right. But I, I think that what helps is if, cause you know, you just committed to your entire audience and to me that you're going to commit yeah. to a meditation practice. So that might inspire you. Like, let's say next week, if you don't feel like it, it might inspire you to actually be like, Oh wait, let me just do what I said I was going to do. Well, exactly. Like everybody <laughs> listening is getting like, everybody listening is getting like kind of an in-depth thing about me today where everyone's going to be like, you hate yourself after so I'm like, no, no, no. After the wrong person, <laughs> the wrong per- you know, can I tell you? Oh my gosh. I had the craziest dream last night and I was trying to look it up and then I got distracted and then we had to come on. I was, this is such a weird dream. I don't know if you do any dream interpretation, but I had this dream and I was, I'm freaking out. Okay. I was, went to the doctor, looked how I do right now, like normal. Right. Um, and she tells me that I'm four and a half months pregnant with twins, but yet I just thought I was bloated from like that time of the month and they're boys. And she had already named them. And because I was smoking, one of the boys wasn't growing his left arm. <laughs> but if I stopped smoking, for some reason I was smoking in the street, the arm would start growing. But here's the other thing, because I didn't know I was pregnant for once, then I didn't know who the father was. So I was trying to get the exact conception date to try to be like, who was it? And I'm not a slut. Like, I don't stick around. <laughs> this was the dream. And then my friends, like, invited me out. And I'm like, oh, well, I, I'm pregnant. And I, I can't, like, I... I I can't smoke and I can't drink and I can't do anything. So, and they were like, all right, well, you're just not invited. And so then I was like alone. It was so bizarre. If anyone's a dream interpreter listening, like you have to reach out to me because I'm like, this is weird. So I, I, because I had a dream the week before about a plane crash. I was on a United flight and the flight just was going down. I wasn't scared. I kept saying, Jesus, just make sure you take me. Just make sure you take me. And then we landed in a tunnel and we're like, beating towards a wall and then it stopped and I survived. And I looked that one up and it was like, Oh, massive success is coming. Like you can handle anything. You're good. And I'm like, Oh, perfect. But I'm like, what is this pregnancy dream with twins that were boys? And one was named Connor. It was so oh my God. Wait. And the, you know what? The fact that your dream is so vivid, like you sound like you remember every detail. Like that's incredible. Every detail. It you know what? Bizarre. I, I am not a dream whisperer, but my bestie's mom is. Okay. So I will tell her this dream tonight and I will email you the mom's interpretation. <laughs> I'll share with you guys on the next intro, but yeah, it was so, so bizarre. But like, oh my God. Like, like certain things like transformation or change, you'll have these weird these weird dreams like these like almost like the, it's almost like in the dream what's being represented is a life-changing moment right? yes playing yes death and then survival and then this is like two children and they were boys like it was wow like, that is kind of so deep. life-changing moment so oh my god I know it was that is really powerful I mean I'm impressed I don't really remember my dreams too much so like the fact that you're telling this elaborate story is pretty impressive that it means something, but I wonder what it means. I don't know. I know you have to find out. I'm we'll so intrigued. Next intro. Yeah, um, that's wild. I know. Okay, so but, let's get back to dating real quick. Uh, okay. Most people, nobody meets in person. It's so sad. Uh, everybody's meeting on these these apps. I I fail at these apps. I'll tell you why. I'm a terrible texter. I tell all my friends this, and they know this. If you're gonna write me a page in a text, I'm probably gonna write you one sentence back. Just be like, oh, congrats, that's great, cool. Talk. When can you hang out? 
that's it. I'm just not, I'm not a texter. I'm a talker. So I, t I fail at these apps. I'm terrible because people will be like, how are you? And they're expecting this long, elaborate story. And I'm like, I don't owe you anything. I don't know you. Like, piss off, right? So I don't do well on these apps. So anyways, for people that are on these apps, because it's 99% of the dating community, how can they set up a profile that, <coughs> pardon me, authentically represents them and gives them the best chance at success in love? Um, well, first I want to say, like, don't, don't give up on meeting someone in person, because it's actually not true. You can. Well, it I can agree. happen. Everybody's, phone, everybody's fucking face is right. in the phone. I'm guilty. No, I know, I know, but I, I have a friend, no, not, she was not a friend, she's actually a client of mine who was very single, wanted a partner yeah. in a very, she really wanted to have a life partner, and she was giving up all hope, and she hated those damn dating apps, and I was like, you have to give them a try, and she's yeah. like, oh, she could not stand them, but she went to a party, and her heart was open because she was in coaching, and she was like getting herself ready to open her heart for love, and she met this guy the crazy, the crazy thing is she didn't, she met the guy at the party, but she happened to leave her coat there by accident. So she had to call him to be like, Hey, I left my coat there. Can I come pick it up? And he's, she's like, sure, come over. And when he went, she went to go get her coat, they were chit chatting and now they've been dating. They've been like cohabit, like cohabitating. And like, it's like a serious situation. So like, you never know. I'm just going to tell you that that happened literally like this in the last few months. So, and she's older in her forties. So you can never, Give up, okay? So I want to say that. But in terms of dating apps, living authentically and pre presenting yourself authentically is the most important thing. Um, so first of all, photos. Make sure you have beautiful photos and authentic photos of yourself. Um, I come from the fashion industry, so photography is very important to me, and imagery is very important. So you make an effort with your photos, okay? Uh, as you guys know, since I shared with you, I've been with my husband 25 years, I have not done the dating apps, yeah. but my friends have been sending me profile pictures of guys that are on those apps looking a hot mess. I mean, un believable to the point where they're screenshotting photos and sending them to me and laughing. That's how bad they are. So we don't, we don't need crappy photos of you looking crazy. We need you actually to look True. nice and like take care right. of yourself. But not filtered. The filter, those filters, those filters have got to go. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm okay. Especially. I mean, I what, what filters you mean? Like the beauty shot, the beauty filters where you're filtering your face and stuff. Oh yeah. It doesn't look As, like you. Yeah, and also as women, when you're doing the beauty app filters, the beauty app filters, we all know it's a filter. Like you can't even pretend that it's not. So don't bother. It's up on the corner. <laughs> right, but but no, not only that. If you can just look at a photo, we know when you're using those filters. It's one thing if you're on Instagram yeah. doing fun filters, you know. Yeah. But what you can do is, I do um, like the Instagram filters for photography. So for example, you would you would take a photo of yourself. And you can put it in Instagram and you can use the Instagram filters, not like the, um, the reels filters that are making crazy with all the sparkles and stuff. No, I'm talking just the photography filters. They're really nice. So if you want to elevate your photography, you can use those filters inside Instagram and screenshot them and then use them for your um, profile photos. Um, if you're not into yeah. photography, you don't know how to elevate your photography, that is a little inside trick. Just, just make sure to, you look like you. Because I hear from my guy friends, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going out with this hot girl. And then I'm like, how'd it go? And they're like, looks nothing like her pictures. Nothing. Yeah, you don't need to fake the funk. Like if you're yeah. going to meet the person in person, just just be yourself. Because yourself is more than enough, right? Exactly. Yeah, and also don't lie on your stats. Just like say the truth, right? And just be real. Think about like, what do you love? What do you, what things you're into? What interests do you have? Share that, just share that. And um, I think what I've learned is that also being consistent and being open-hearted is the way to do that. So I've had a few of my clients marry guys they met on Hinge, which is oh, shocking. I've, yeah, I've had but like. What'd you say? I said a couple of <clears throat> my friends have gotten married on Hinge and one on Tinder. 
So you never know, everyone. I think I think the reason why Hinge might work well is because it's like through friends or friends or friends on Hinge. Um, okay. So that okay. so that's I think what is good. But I can give you a story of a client of mine who this is a real story. She um, was with a guy. She was kind of in love with this guy, but he was not like he wasn't all in. He was playing games, right? He was. He there was a long distance situation. So when he, she realized that he was not going to be the one, her heart was broken and she did do a lot of healing. And the healing work that we did together required a lot of self-love work. You're, you're looking within, you're journaling, you're meditating, you're clearing the energy, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing all these things to feel better, to love yourself more. And it took a lot of time and effort, but she was all into her healing. And one day she said, let me just go on hands, let me try again. So you know, another good thing to do on these dates is not commit to these like long um, dates. I was just talking to a colleague of mine, a young man in his thirties. He's like, you know, I don't want to go have to like pay for dinner and all this stuff. And then I don't even like the girl. I'm like, well then don't do evening dates. You just meet her for coffee or meet her for a drink. Make it like an hour. It's short and sweet. You can tell a vibe. If you guys are vibing, then you can invite her for dinner on a Friday night or a Saturday night. You don't have to start like it feel like, he was like, why do I have to invest all this money? I'm like, you don't. It could be short and sweet. And he was like, you're so right. I think I'm going to do that. You know, so you that's one thing. One. Huh? You can put more into one day. Yeah, you can just, you can. And, and a long story short is she decided to open her heart to this one client. And the guy walked in. They got along well. And it was nice. She liked him. He liked her. Okay, fine. And she's like, listen, it was a short date. It was only a drink date. It was only supposed to be a drink for like an hour. She's like, well, I have plans after I'm going to my friend's party. He was like, can I come? She was like, all right. So she gets to the party and like, he's she's like, well, like, who is this guy? She's like, I don't know, some guy I just met on a date. They got married. They've been together ever since. It's been years. They are Aww. the perfect couple. So I'm just saying you never, That's ever know. You it, never, it, ever know. But, you, but the reason she even admits this, she was open and ready for him because she did the work. Mm, she nice. did she did the hard work she did the personal growth work yeah that's why she was so ready for him and he's a good man that that is her ideal life partner and that that's what you want you don't want a partner you want your ideal life partner so when you say does the work if somebody is listening and they say or maybe myself uh and they say i you know what i need to open my heart it's very locked up how long does this take? Like, what is the time <laughs> commitment of this process? Oh, you, I'm you know what? I'm on my way. <laughs> you know what? I think that client was like a six month process. Oh, I sometimes a four. Maybe, <laughs> maybe like, uh, it could be, uh, well, but also just because you, you work with a, a therapist or a coach or a healer for maybe four months, six, three months, four months, six months you continue that work on your own because you are in a good space and you're committed to yourself. Yeah. So there's no like time commitment. It's a matter of you. It becomes your lifestyle. Oh. It's not, and then it doesn't become work because it's like yeah. part of your life. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. So before we wrap up, there was one other thing um, I wanted to get to and now it just left my brain. I think I'm like thinking about like, ugh. God, I have so much work to do. <laughs> you really don't. Don't look at it as like, <laughs> oh my God, I have so much work. Just look at it as I'm going to go on a new, new personal journey. I like that. Oh, here was the thing that I, that I wanted to, to end with. Um, because it has to do with like confidence and relationships and everything. How to stop. What are your, cause I've asked other people on this podcast about it and everyone has a little bit of a different tip, but my, I think it's so important how to not, let others other opinions affect you or like how to not give a fuck what people think about you because that's power like what are your oh my god that is so everything that? i also think that's a work in progress for everyone yeah um but the confidence boosting well okay you don't give an f about what anyone thinks when you are you are living in your authentic truth and when you living with your confidence in your authentic self period point blank you don't care what anyone thinks i once did have a client say to me one day you know what i don't give a f 
when anyone thinks anymore. I actually stood up and gave her a standing ovation because I couldn't believe it. Like, like no one says that. Like, how do you get to that point where you like, I don't give an F. I know. And I know that she said, I know that she meant it because she changed her life so dramatically, right? right. Um, how do you get to that point? By everything I just said before, is by learning how to love yourself more, period, point blank. Learning how to love yourself in the deepest way. It sounds so vague and so like ethereal, but like it's how to be true to yourself, to know what you desire, to know what you love, to know what you not know, know what you don't like, know what you're going to put up with, know what you're not going to put up with, you know? And once you get to that point, it doesn't matter what your family says or what your best friends think, or, you know, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks about a partner you might really like or about a job you might take or anything that you do in your life. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It matters what you think. But, yeah. the, and, and, but in order to get there, I do think sometimes if you're stuck, it requires you to, A, start a meditation practice, start a journaling practice, have more fun in your life. Um, all these different things you can do um, to enable yourself to grow your self-worth, self-confidence, self, you know, respect. And once you're doing all that, then eventually you'll be like, I do not care what anyone says. These are my boundaries. If you don't like it, step off, keep it stepping. Yeah. I am, I'm done with this. I'm okay with this. Like if someone is throwing you shade and treating you like crap every, every, every single day, you're dealing with narcissist personalities and you don't even realize it when you're dealing with all that stuff and they're manipulating you, they're, they're gaslighting you left and right. They're talking in circles and you think you're the fool, you know, like, no, once you have to realize you're dealing with these kind of, whether it's negative energy from that situation or people that are just bringing you down, you can with kindness and compassion shift who you spend your time with shift how you're going to set boundaries there's all these things you can do, but it comes from, once you start doing that, I think we can all elevate, elevate our confidence. And even though we, we're gonna have ebbs, dips, ebbs and flows in our confidence level, and that's just human nature, we all can't be confident 24 hours a day. Um, these kind of internal practices can help us so much. Uh, I remember there was on Instagram, there was a little teeny reel on Rihanna way back in the day and someone asked her on a microphone and she was at some award show. So what do you do when you're, when you're not feeling confident, you're not feeling your best? Yeah. And she was like, I fake it. She goes, because, and they were like, oh, fake it till you make it. She goes, absolutely. Because what it, are you going to lay in bed and just cry yourself to sleep and you wake up with puffy eyes? No, you're yeah. going to, you know, feel what you feel, acknowledge your feelings, but I'm all for faking it till you make it because the more we can just go live our life anyway, even if we're feeling like crap, blessings and good, good energy is coming from that. Yeah. A hundred percent. No. And that's very well said. And I think it's like when you're on that, I, from like my experiences, like when you're on that journey of, of trying to get to that full authentic place where you're like, I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. Um, during that time where I know I've struggled is like, yeah, during that growing time, you're getting the outside, well, I don't think you're right on that, or, you know, you should, you know, what it, so it's like, you're battling a fight while you're trying to climb the mountain, you know, yeah. people are like, hold, you're like climbing up this mountain, and people are like, holding your feet back, but it's like, you have to get stronger to just kick them off. Exactly. Like, not let you know, things kind of bother you, so to say. And, and, and also realize that people, you know, evolve and change and grow and they're, and you're not going to necessarily grow with them and they're not going to grow with you. And that's, yeah, that, that's absolutely for me. That's, that was one of the things I struggled with the most was like, you know, I have a lot of um, childhood or like high school friends, <clears throat> you know, and, and I've been so blessed for that, but you know, people have families and they different directions in their life and you're not as close with people and nothing ever happened, but you can't, it's like you're constantly chasing them to be like, can we hang out? Can we hang out? Can we hang out? And you start to get this thing where you're like, I'm tired. Maybe they just, maybe they just don't want to hang out with me anymore. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, they've grown apart from me and it's hard, but it's like, 
there's people I've grown apart from. But yeah, it's, it's so hurtful when that happens. Hard. It's heartbreaking, especially when you're so attached to your friends and your girlfriends from childhood. I've been there. I think all yeah. of us women have. It, it is heartbreaking because friendship, when you see a long time friendship dissolve and you're like, wait, I thought we were besties. What happened? You know what I mean? And it's like, oh my God. And I've seen that happen even with my daughter and it's happening in, as a teenager and yeah. seeing her having her ha have that awareness that her childhood besties you thought would be her ride or dies forever are no longer there. And it's like heartbreaking to see it, you know? And then as adults, we're doing the same thing. I, I have, I'm, I'm in some like with you with childhood friends, literally since six years old, well, my, my element, I just went to my besties bar mitzvah this weekend and for her, her, her son. And then I have, high school friends and college friends. I like to hold on to my girls, yeah. but then there, there's some girls that you thought you were really close with. They're not feeling you anymore. They dropped me like a bad habit and it hurts <laughs> like hell. But once you realize it, yeah, it's, it's like, that. wait, okay. You know what they say? Like, what, I, I, don't, I don't know what the phrase is. I'm sure you already know, like seasons for a reason or whatever. Like they're in your life for a season. Yes, for the people. Like yes, people are in your life for a for a reason, and sometimes they're not always meant to be there for the long haul. And I think yeah. that's okay, and that's natural. It just hurts us because if you're emotional and you actually care about your friends, yeah. it really hurts when friendships dissolve. But also, we've done that to friends too, and we probably don't realize how we've hurt friends by doing that same thing. Um, but we have to kind of realize that that's I think the cycle of life. Oh, it totally is. And, and it's like, you have to focus on like all the friends that do reach out to you and that do care about you and all those. And like, it's, it's weird as you get older in life, you, you, you start to have less and less, your, your circle grows smaller and smaller and smaller. Your network expands, but who can you really count on becomes smaller and smaller and smaller is what I found. And, and they also say that with massive success too, not that I'm there yet, but I will be because I'm convinced. You will be there. You will like, the circle will get smaller and you yeah. have to be okay with that. It's very lonely at the top, but yeah. So it's one of those things too, where it's like, yeah, I think I've accepted. I mean, the funniest thing is like, they always write me back, but it's like, they don't, I feel like I'm always chasing. To be yeah. Like, you know what? How it's are you? I want to see you. I want to hug you. I want to grab a drink. I'll even come over. I, you know, somebody said to me, Oh, we like, we we're supposed to hang out. I totally forgot. My daughter has a soccer game. And you know what I said? Not a problem. I would love to go to your daughter, daughter soccer game. We can catch up there. I can bring you a coffee. Well, we have friends staying with us and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, just so defeated. Cause I was willing, even willing to go to a child's soccer game. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I honestly, my, my heart goes out to you. Well, I've been there. Yeah. I've been there, girl, trying to offer any opportunity to see your bestie. And well, they're just, a it's just a friend, from your friend, friend your friend. <laughs> and they're just like, not, they're giving you, um, signs that they're just not interested in making time. And so that is hurtful sometimes. It is. It but is. I think I'm um, going back to what you were saying about you're climbing to the top and people are trying to drag you down. I yeah. mean, if you, if you listen to, I mean, there's quotes from every possible successful multimillionaire entrepreneur and every successful person on the face of the earth. And they all say the same thing about there's so many people trying to bring those people that are uplifting themselves, bringing them down to their level because they're jealous mm -hmm. they're, or they doubt themselves. Can I do that too? Maybe they doubt themselves. They want you to stay on their level. or um, they just don't understand what you're trying to do. So they just want to keep you in the box that they know you in. And so I think this is natural. This happens to every, I, I've, you can go on, you can hear every possible quote in the world on Instagram, any social media, anything. Um, and they all talk about it. And it's our responsibility if we have ambition and we want to achieve big things for us to let the naysayers be a little more silent in our lives like not take their opinions to heart even if our naysayers are our loved ones because sometimes our loved ones are sabotaging our shit and they, we don't even realize it you know what i mean usually it usually is your loved ones are the people that are right. close to you only because like if they weren't close to you like you don't care what the guy working at 7-eleven thinks when you go in to get a coffee if he's like right 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 
suck. You're not going to make it. You're like, that, that was actually kind of funny. Okay. See ya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you don't care. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, it's also really important about the friendship thing too, is that you're never too old. I've learned this. You're never too old to make new, really close friends. And a lot of people think that you I like age it. out of your friends when you get a little older and like, oh my God, I have to, I have to like, how am I going to meet new friends if I'm like in my thirties, in my forties? No, I have met, I am a living, living um, example of being able to meet women in my thirties. Cause as, as a mother, I was able to meet like, you know, other moms raising kids, but I was able to nurture these like really strong relationships that I never thought was possible. I thought I was the kind of person like I have my girlfriends from my past. I don't need any new friends. Yeah. I don't even, I don't get, I don't even have time to see them. How am I making new friends? I don't have, I'm too busy. But if you give yourself, if you walk with an open heart, you would be surprised. You can actually make new friends at any age. And my mother does the same thing. She's in her seventies and she's still making new friends. So you're never too old. I like that. And that's a good reminder because sometimes we get so, so busy and we don't have as much energy when it comes to Friday. I mean, like, you, you, you know, the older you get, you're like, oh, I get to stay in on a Friday, like becomes amazing or before it was depressing. And now you're like, I get to stay in on a Friday, you know, or right, it right. becomes the, be the greatest thing ever. So bringing on new friends is like, oh, fuck, I got to wash my hair. Um, <laughs> yes. You do have to make an effort to look your best, but you might end up having well, fun. Right. Exactly. So it's like those experiences, like you, you definitely, definitely have to get out. Well, this is amazing. So where can people find you and get coached by you? Oh, okay. Well, you know, I have a website. It's hopemcgrath.com. That's my name. So that's pretty easy. Um, M C G R A T H. And then on my site, you can download a free guide that I have, which is the five rituals to ignite your power. So you can get a little rituals from me to kind of get a little insight on how to ignite that confidence. So there's a free guide there on the website. You can just um, sign up for that. And you can even, I offer a complimentary private consultation. It's called a clarity call. So if you want to book a clarity call with me, you can do that on my website, hopemcgrath.com. You can book a private um, coaching clarity call. You can see that you'll see a section that says private coaching, and then you can just book the call there. And then also follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram. I'm not really that great on social media, but I'm trying to get there. So my Instagram is at hope.mcgrath, the little period between my name. So that's how you can find me. And I, you can check out, you'll be able to learn about my group program and my um, private coaching on the website. Okay, perfect. Well, I mean, this was great. And I hope you guys all got, I, I know, I feel that everyone listening got something out of this. And that was oh my God. the goal. That's that amazing. a lot out of it. You guys probably got to know me more than you. <laughs> but that's the whole point of this. Being vulnerable, people people are going to come back. So they're like, what is this girl going to talk about next? Um, exactly. That's, I mean, that's what it's all about. Also, open heartedness, vulnerability. You're like, you're practicing to open your heart and your love life by this podcast because you're being vulnerable with your audience. Think about that. This is true, you guys. And next week we have, uh, coming on next week, it's kind of funny because this was like a uh, life lesson, transformation, self-love, female perspective. And then next week we've got a guy who wrote a book uh, called Wisdom of Men. Uh, about like the male brain and kind of how to, you know, make yourself, I don't know. I'm going through the questions right now and I'm going, oh my gosh, I got to ask some like really funny questions. So next oh, wow. week, we're going into the wisdom of men. So be excited. Make sure you guys rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, we're on YouTube. People have just kind of really discovered that we're on YouTube. Our YouTube is having the, cr just not a great, um, not a great, uh, uh, performance. Everyone wants to go to audio, which I get cause you can listen to it running or at the gym or whatnot, but we do have, a YouTube channel. If you guys want to subscribe there, uh, I know it was, um, Charles, uh, Hodgkinson's, the Cardano episode that people really caught on to the YouTube. So thank you for everybody that tuned into that, that commented on that, that left feedback. If you guys could, if anything you didn't like about this or you loved about this, I want to hear from you. This is how we feed you more of what we want and we bring you the good stuff. Don't forget you guys follow hope, uh, go to hopemcgrath.com. And then her Instagram, hope.mcgrath. So make sure you're following her as much as 
this show needs more YouTube followers because everyone goes to audio for some reason. I don't know why anyone doesn't want to see my shirts and my shiny face, <laughs> but it's there. So pretty. So, <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so thank you so much, Hope. This, is, this has been amazing. You and I are definitely talking offline, and I've committed by the time we talk next week for the Wisdom of Men, I'm going to tell you guys about my meditation. I have to write that down. My meditation for a week. And then I'm also going to tell you what the dream interpretation meant when Hope emails her friend's mother. Yes. And by the way, I just want to mention one of there's for meditation, there's a free meditation app that I was put onto that I actually really like. It's called Insight Timer. Oh. So on Insight Timer, the meditation app, you can put music on. You don't have to do a guided meditation because sometimes they're probably not for five minutes. They have really great meditation music. You can pick something. This is what I do. I pick a song that I might like. I put my phone timer on for five minutes. I, I sometimes do it for 10, 20, but wait, I'm telling you to do five. Okay. And then you, you can like zone out and listen to beautiful meditation music while you're meditating. It kind of helps you stay focused. So that's a little uh, inside um, beginner trick. Love it. For, for meditation. Okay, perfect. And that's the in, Insight Timer app? Insight Timer app. Yep. It's free. Okay. So yeah, you guys check that out. And, and if you're going to do this challenge, um, please comment, comment. You can leave reviews. We love hearing from you guys. It helps us with this podcast to grow. Um, we've seen phenomenal growth. We couldn't do it without each and every one of you guys and amazing guests like Hope. So thank you so much. The gratitude is there. Uh, you guys have a fantastic week, week, weekend. Be safe tonight. Don't spread your legs unless they're going to bite you. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and have a happy hangover. If you're listening to this after, you're going to be like, I really wish I would have listened to this the day after I have to just think of the man. But it's all good. <laughs> Love you guys all. Thank you, Hope. And we'll see you next time to find out who's next. Hey, your host here, Madison Malloy. Please make sure to subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms and please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. Also, if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at contact at I thank you again for listening. Bye.